We are in the era of streaming services, so today I'm gonna to stop and rank all six streaming services that I have from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the streaming services that you have. As I go into this, I'm not trying to provide an exhaustive, objective review of each of these streaming services. It's my personal experience with them, both how good the exclusives are, how many exclusives there are, the size and quality of the archive of other content that they have, the ease of use, and just the practicality of how often does my family open up this particular streaming service. That's what I'm going for as I go into this. One final thing before we get started, this video is brought to you by my supporters over on Patreon. Each month I have my patrons submit and vote on ideas for a video. This month they ask for me to rank the streaming services. You can check out my Patreon page at the link down below in the description to see if it might be right for you. All of my patrons gained access to three exclusive live streams, three exclusive podcasts, multiple exclusive reviews and editorials and access to a talk I gave to a marketing class at a university on YouTube. And also if you join at a certain level, you can get your name listed at the end card of every single one of my videos. If you might be interested, you can check that out at the link down below in the description and let's get started. In last place is Apple Plus. Apple decided to jump into the streaming game this past fall. And in the two months that I've had the service, there hasn't been much there to hold my attention. Now we joined to gain access to the morning show and my wife and I thoroughly enjoyed that one particular show. It was worth however much we paid to get to watch it for those two months that it was airing. And as soon as the show was done, there was nothing really left for us to watch. We checked out a couple of the other shows on there. None of them grabbed my attention. They were all a little bit interesting, but they didn't absolutely draw me in the way the morning show did. And so the problem we have here is that it's a streaming service reliant entirely on its exclusive, but m exclusives, but almost all of them are super niche. They're intentionally, they went for kind of auteurs and creators. And so they went for real specific visions for it, not broad appeal. And so I just don't know that it can draw people in the way some of the other services have. I've also had issues with the streaming at times where shows didn't run or they didn't work quite right, or I started a show and then the streaming got lost and then it doesn't didn't have a resume feature so we had to fast forward through it to kind of find our spot that was pretty frustrating when that happened and then it just doesn't have an archive it doesn't it's not linked to a bunch of other stuff it's all about the exclusives and thus far there's one that I loved and a bunch that I've been okay with but didn't fall in love with they didn't make me binge them the way the one did and there have been issues with ease of use and it's only on my apple tv so for that reason without question it's easily in last place for me in fifth place is cbs all access now this is one that i've always found incredibly annoying because i don't think they should have created a streaming service i think they should have just partnered up with hulu or someone else i do not like it when a channel decides to play this particular game. So I've never liked CBS All Access. The reason I've frequently signed up for them is they've had some exclusives that absolutely I was the target audience for. In particular, Star Trek Discovery, Twilight Zone, and uh, Star Trek Picard. Now, given these exclusives right here, Star Trek Discovery has always kind of frustrated me. I didn't finish watching the first season of The Twilight Zone. I probably will eventually, especially now that I've re-upped with CBS All Access. So I'll probably finish it right now, but there was a lot of things that just pretty well underwhelmed me with Twilight Zone. And we've only got one episode of Star Trek Picard, but I have loved it. So they have some good hooks. They have things that I will pay money to check out their exclusives, but their actual archive of content, CBS isn't a channel that I've ever liked all that much what they go for. They tend to go for real broad appeal in their comedies, and it, I've never liked their particular stuff. Um, their kind of crime procedurals, not my thing. So while they do have a pretty robust catalog of stuff, it's not the catalog that I go to. And I've had CBS All Access on and off for two years now, and I almost never watch any of the archive that they offer. So it's only a value for these exclusives that 
they will get me to pay to check them out. I have had streaming and buffering issues with them significantly more so than the ones higher up on this list. And so I also don't think it's a great piece of software with the way that it runs. So another one I don't particularly care for. Number four is Hulu. And to be clear, there's a huge gap between CBS All Access, which I don't particularly like, and Hulu, which is a service I actually have enjoyed quite a bit over the years. Whenever it first opened, I subscribed for Hulu and I've had it ever since. I think maybe a couple times we've canceled for a few months, but for the most part for Basically a decade, we've had Hulu. At our household, we've never had cable. We've also been always been streaming service reliant. And so what Hulu offers is they offer a whole bunch of first run TV shows, a bunch of main network shows, the day after they air, you can stream them. So that's been very helpful for my wife and I to catch up on a bunch of shows that we like. And um, the reason, the thing that holds this one back Back in the day, it would have been right there, a nice companion to Netflix is that over the years, several of these different channels have decided to start their own services. So they've pulled their content off of Hulu because Hulu is the competitor, in which case it hasn't been quite as useful for me over the last three-ish years because of that. My wife still watches a bunch of the shows on there. Right now, there aren't any shows on Hulu that I'm watching all that often. Some of the Marvel stuff stuff on there. I've always been kind of interested in, but it's never been the way that I loved Marvel Netflix. That hasn't been the case with like Runaways. It was like, oh, I kind of like this, but it didn't draw me in nearly as much. So I'm not sure if I've had any of their exclusives that I've ever really been all that into. So that's also a bit of a problem. Um, I, I don't like the layout they use. I think it's very pretty, but it's not practical. And when it comes to a streaming service that has this massive archive, one of the most important things is helping me find stuff that I'd be interested in. And I don't think it does a good job of that at all. Like I have to just browse through the gigantic list to find the stuff that I'm interested in. And so that's another problem that I kind of have with it. So while I think it does have a pretty good archive, it has a lot of functionality or, um, usefulness because it has those first run shows. I personally don't use it nearly as much as I used to because I don't think it's very user friendly and finding stuff. And because it just, it lost some of the shows, especially like the CW Arrowverse stuff. That's how I used to watch them for years. And then CW pulled them. And that was a big thing that made me go, all right, Hulu's not quite as useful for me as it used to be. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking of the streaming services that you have or have tried down below in the comment section. And as I said before, this isn't meant to be this fully objective review walking through every single point. It's based off my experience and my family's experience using these streaming services and basically which ones are most important to us as a family. Also, after this video, if you wanna check out my Patreon page, you can do that at the link down below in the description. In third place is Amazon Prime. Now, I really like Amazon Prime. They have a bunch of exclusive TV shows that I've thoroughly enjoyed, a couple of the recent ones being Jack Ryan as well as The Boys, and then it just has a huge archive of movies and deep cuts. It's not just obvious stuff, like they really got some connection. So like for me, I enjoy a bunch of 80s and 90s action movies, martial arts type stuff, and they will have some stuff like, I haven't thought about this movie in 20 years and they've got it. And I love that they have that rich of an archive. And it's not just for my action movies, it's for a whole bunch of different niches. And then they also have a whole bunch of like, very recent blockbuster type stuff like the Mission Impossible movies and, and more. The thing that holds this one back for me is they have always had a just messy, clunky interface that makes it too difficult to find stuff or it's unpleasant to try and navigate through all of it because they're incorporating movies you can pay for and things that you uh, are on Amazon Prime and the way they recommend things is kind of weird. The actual interface itself isn't the most fluid and intuitive in the way that it works. And so I can get lost in the middle of all this searching through things. And that for me makes it one that I don't enjoy using. Even the way they do seasons for TV shows is so clunky because a lot of times it's broken down into individual seasons as units itself. Some of the seasons are free and some of them you have to pay for. So a really weird way to do things. And it has led to my kids accidentally purchasing things that they're not 
supposed to purchase because they just just watched the free season and they went to the next one and they accidentally paid for something that they weren't supposed to pay for. The content that they provide exclusives in the archive is quite good, but I don't like actually using their apps, their website itself. So that is a big part of what holds this one back from being in the top two because it has the content to potentially be in those top two spots. Our runner up is Disney Plus. Now I know a ton of people that as soon as the Mandalorian season one was over, they're like, I guess there's nothing else for me here. I guess I'll cancel until we get season two. And if you're in that camp, I totally get it. If I was a single adult, I might be in that camp myself. But as a guy that has three kids under the age of 10 and someone that has this particular YouTube channel, I can't imagine ever canceling Disney Plus. It is such a lifesaver for my family. There's such a rich archive of stuff that this household watches on a daily basis. Downstairs right now, my little 17 month old baby is watching Muppet Babies and then she'll be watching Little Einstein and then my kids will come home and they'll watch something else that's on there. I mean, Disney Plus is in constant rotation at my household and it has the Mandalorian. In the near future, we're gonna have these MCU TV shows. So it has exclusive, it has some exclusive now that are really cool. And the potential for the future just looks amazing for what they're looking to put on there. So for me, when it comes to services that I think, I I'm never gonna get rid of this. This is just too good at the price point. Disney Plus is that for me. Now, it had a couple issues on the rollout with the streaming type stuff, um, getting certain error messages, and there's a little bit of frustration that it the full archive isn't always there. I get it, but at the end of the day, what's being turned on in the Chandler household, it's Disney Plus. That is where we're at, and that's me as a family man, so I love Disney Plus. But coming in in first place for me is the original Netflix. Now, I have been a Netflix user for about 18 years now, maybe 19 years. I had the disc service for years. And then when they had the original version of the streaming site where it was only on a website that you could access on your computer, I was using it at that point in time right out of the gate and I went, this is the future right here. As soon as they can get an app for your Xbox or whatever, this is the future, and then six months later that happened, and it just transformed the way that people consume movies and TV at home, and I have been a massive fan ever since. I think they have the best archive because it is diverse. It has a bunch of hit movies. It has a bunch of smaller stuff. It has an enormous, enormous selection of TV shows to, to watch. Sometimes I'll see people say, I'm thinking about canceling Netflix. There's just never anything on there. And I personally, I can't relate to that. From my from my perspective, just the archive itself is, is worth twice as much as they charge me. And I think back to when I was growing up, you just had to wait till the next episode of a TV show aired, a week in the future, whatever. So the concept of a Netflix with this much of an archive of all these shows and movies is mind blowing to me. But it's not just the archive, it's also the exclusives. And I think that they've, had a pretty questionable strategy over the last few years where they've just tried to uh, shotgun style, just throw out so much content that they haven't been pick picky enough about what they create. But if you just kind of go through what they have created, I've loved some of the Marvel Netflix stuff. I mean, Daredevil, maybe my favorite TV show of the past decade. They have had the Irishman, Marriage Story, a bunch of kind of smaller rom-coms, like Always Be My Maybe was a ton of fun last year. And they've got a bunch of this, just different stuff that they found uh, that are exclusives, they're only there. So for me, Netflix, they continue to just offer value. And if they can focus those exclusives more and stop doing shotgun style, like let's put out 10 originals every single week, stop doing that and focus it on this hit content. Like when they go for it and they get a Henry Cavill to do a TV show or they team up with Marvel, whenever they do that stuff, they actually get really good things out there and stop doing the random crap left and right that nobody cares about and that you forget about. So for me, without question, Netflix is the one I watch the most. 
it comes in at number one. If you're interested in going deep where Sean Chandler talks about, check out my Patreon page at that link down below. I'm doing my best I can this year to offer as much value over there as I can and really get to know the community through the live streams and everything like that. If you might be interested, check out that link down below. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.